I want to welcome all of you to Columbia University School of Nursing. Congratulations on your acceptance. Um, I hope that all of you will come. We will make space for you. Um, we are very good at um, dealing with large numbers of students. We break um, into small groups um, for hands-on learning, and sometimes we do have large lectures in rooms like this, but you will get the experience and the personal attention um, that you would like to get in a nursing school. So I welcome you here today. Just a little bit of our school history. Um, we started in 1892 as the Presbyterian Hospital School of Nursing and we joined the university in 1937. Our school has as its mission um, a scholarly approach to clinical and research excellence. Um, we look into outcomes research and health policy as well as our clinical preparation. We've had more than 9,000 nurses graduate since the school began and we are the first nursing school in the country to offer a clinical doctorate, which is the Doctor of Nursing Practice, which I will speak about in a bit. So we call our program the Combined BSMS program because we are encouraging you to go on to be advanced practice nurses. And so it is a combined uh, BS and MS program but the students all call it the Entry to Practice or ETP program. So that's what I usually call it as well. We do offer a Master of Science as an advanced practice nurse, and we have two doctoral programs that will be available to you. One is the um, Doctor of Philosophy degree, the PhD, which is a research degree, which you would be able to um, enter after your first year as an ETP student or you can um, proceed on to the Doctor of Nursing Practice program, which is the clinical degree. We have several specialties here that you, we've asked you to select one of those um, as your interest. We have an acute care nurse practitioner, which at Columbia educates nurses and nurse practitioners to work in emergency and intensive care units. We have a primary care program for adult nurse practitioners, which you'll be taught from adolescence through um, adult age. Um, this is combined with the geriatric nurse practitioner program, um, which is unfortunately 50 and over, so I fit into that um, geriatric population. Um, Family nurse practitioners are, are from birth until any age. Psychiatric mental health nurse practitioners, we teach individual, family, and group therapy. We have a nurse midwifery program, the oldest in the country. We offer oncology as a concentration and women's health as a concentration or subspecialty. We also have our nurse anesthesia program which those students will be taking one year off after the first ETP year to work in an intensive care unit and then return for anesthesia. We do offer a joint program with the School of Public Health and the School of Business. We have several subspecialties and we have a little waxing and waning of interest, um, but we, one very popular one is palliative and end of life care. Um, the HIV AIDS um, subspecialty is very popular. Addictive behaviors, genetics, I mentioned oncology and women's health. Most of those subspecialties, in fact all of them, can be done within the same amount of time as you're doing your primary nurse practitioner program. So it is additional coursework, but you don't stay longer to complete that. Um, so here at Columbia, we are pushing our doctoral education. Um, we currently have the ETP program, moving on to the master's program, um, PhD, and doctor of nursing practice. The research doctorate um, can be started, like I said, the first year, after the first year of ETP. Um, and then we do, we have very um, differing areas of focus that you can see on the slide. 
um, depending on which doctoral faculty you're working with, um, and hopefully your interests will match up. The clinical doctorate um, prepares nurses for fully accountable care across settings and over time. So for instance, I was educated, actually I, I'm an alum here, from here, as an adult geriatric nurse practitioner, which is a primary care um, program. And once the doctorate was offered, we learned to admit patients to the hospital. I have admitting privileges here. Um, we can work across settings. Um, so you learn a little bit more about acute and long-term care. Um, of course, our ultimate goal is to improve the care that we give to our patients and their families. So a little bit about the first year for which I'm the director. This is where you're going to learn your first um, bit of information about becoming a nurse. We're going to socialize you to that role. This is where you're going to learn a lot of the tasks that everybody thinks are very, very important. But I might just say that anybody can do and be taught some of these tasks. Um, it's, the, it's the critical thinking that you're going to um, put in addition to those skills and tasks that will make you a great Columbia nurse. Um, once you finish this first year, you will sit for the national exam, which is the NCLEX exam, and then you can either take a leave of absence if you would like, or you can go right into your specialty studies. Our programs are designed to bring students straight through, even all the way to the doctoral degree. Um, there's, this is the ETP faculty and staff. There's, we are not all here this morning, but we'll be here for lunch. Um, they're teaching this morning. Um, if I can get the arrow to work. This is Chandra Cates, and Chandra um, kind of runs the ETP office. So if you ever have any questions, this is the person that you, you go to see. And Nina Luciano Roman is our program coordinator. She helps me to run the program smoothly. This is obviously doesn't look like me, but it is me. <laughs> this is um, Ellen Levine. She's the assistant director and our clinical coordinator. This is Norma Hannigan. She teaches health promotion um, and community nursing. Dr. Greenfield, Sue Greenfield, teaches med surge and pharmacology. This is Rachel Mackey. She teaches our psychiatric mental health. Christina Araujo teaches our OB and childbearing families. And Dr. Jane Churchill, who teaches pediatrics for us. So these are faces that you'll see this afternoon. And you won't remember their names, but you'll recognize who they are. So I want to give you just a few um, tips for success. I think probably all of you are looking at accelerated programs, um, hoping that Columbia will be your number one choice. But a little bit about how the program works. So in a traditional nursing program, which is what I did about 36 years ago, um, the first two years are spent in science, math, um, you know, some psychology courses, sociology courses, and all of you have taken those courses in your previous degrees, so we don't ask you to repeat those. We do ask you to come in with some basic science knowledge in anatomy and physiology, nutrition, microbiology. Um, and then tra in traditional programs, the last two years are spent with nursing courses that build upon those sciences. Um, we don't do that. We take those two years of nursing courses, and we do it in one year, um, actually about 10 or 11 months. So it's not a part-time commitment. Um, most people do not work, right? <laughs> they cannot work. Um, there's really not time to work. Um, we have close to 1,000 clinical hours, which matches other four-year programs. I always say don't plan any big life changes. Um, you're not going to get a week off for a honeymoon. Um, so get married before you come or after you're finished. Um, I ask people not to get pregnant. Nobody listens to me. 
Uh, I don't know why, but um, no, it is very, very difficult to have um, large life changes when you're in this um, particular year. And I think the support system, people are upstairs, very important in this program. Um, you need to have a great support system. Um, the other thing is we don't follow a normal college calendar. So when, you're, when you were in college, if you recall, you would get six weeks off in December. Um, here you'll get one to two weeks. Some, this year we had three. But often we are here in school till December 23rd and we come back on the 2nd or 3rd of January. So it's, um, we really have to put a lot of um, information into a short period of time. So this is just kind of an overview of what you might expect if you decide to come to Columbia. We have classes Monday through Friday. Sometimes we start at 8 a.m. Um, there's one night that we go until 8 p.m. We start you in the hospital the second week of school. We don't wait too long. And we put you in skills lab um, once a week. And there you're going to learn with simulation dolls how to do IVs, um, tracheostomy care, urinary catheter insertion. It's always nice to um, do these kinds of tasks on um, a simulation doll. They do cough and they do moan and they do cry, but it's not quite like a real patient. Um, and then in the fall and winter, um, we have classes usually on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Again, the time is variable. And we start our um, weekly two days a week for clinical. When we go to clinical, we start at 7 a.m. in the morning and we get out at 3. We do do makeups on Sunday if for some reason we cannot hold a clinical. Once the fall and winter um, sessions are over and we go to spring, which will start next week, our students have spring break or week after next. Um, and after they come back from spring break, we assign them one-on-one -on -one with a nurse in the New York area in any of the boroughs, and they work that nurse's schedule. So if he or she works nights, our students work nights. If he or she works weekends, our students work weekends. And I think, and I could ask Michelle, I think this is the favorite part of the program because you're no longer part of a clinical group. You're not one of eight students. You are one-on-one -on -one with a nurse on her license or his license. And you really, really learn your time management skills. You really learn how to take care of a whole load of patients instead of just one or two patients that you would do when you're in the groups. Um, we, you also will have a seminar once a week so that um, you can talk about the cases that you're seeing in the hospital or your clin clinical experience. And these are usually done with the master specialty faculty because you're going to be moving on into the nurse practitioner role. Um, for the first summer, um, the students tend to call it boot camp. Um, it's really not, but it is, it is difficult. It's about 18 credits um, in nine weeks. So it's not easy. We um, teach you physical assessment, which is a head-to-toe physical, the way a physician and nurse practitioner do that. The science of nursing practice is learning how circulation, respiration, those things, um, how they work in the body. And then you practice skills associated with that in the skills lab. You'll go to the hospital. Nursing issues is a course that um, we talk about vulnerable populations working with HIV patients. We talk about death and dying. So we, it's a variety of topics. Um, you'll have your first advanced physiology course, which um, is very advanced. That's why it's called advanced. It is a master's course that you take in the first semester. And you really need to be prepared. Um, you need to review your anatomy and physiology because it's only nine weeks, so it goes very fast. And then your first of two pharmacology courses. The first pharmacology course is actually from a nursing 
um, delivery of medications, and the second pharm um, pharmacology course that you would take as an advanced practice nurse is more about um, prescribing. Um, in the fall, um, you'll continue, but we do, do uh, with some of your courses like pathophysiology, research course, um, disease, health promotion, disease prevention, and we, we actually then divide the class into a fourth, and we, um, you rotate through working with adults, children, pregnancy, um, and psychiatric health. And each one fourth of the class will be in each one of those immersions at one time. So I wanna speak a little bit about um, class size because you're looking around and seeing a lot of students, possible students. So as I said, some of the lectures will be in lecture halls like this. Um, when we divide the group into fours, the, the classroom is much smaller. There's about 40 students. Um, when you're in the clinical, it's eight students to each instructor. When you're in the assessment lab and the skills lab, it's four students to each instructor. So we, we really do um, accommodate for the large numbers. Um, we have plenty of faculty to work with you in smaller groups. The other thing is that um, all of the professors here either are practicing or they are doing research. So when you're learning um, medical surgical nursing, you're, you're working and learning from somebody who has been a nurse practitioner and knows the information that you need to have to be a nurse and a nurse practitioner. Um, I talked about integration. It's about it's usually three 12-hour shifts after spring break. Um, we we do have about 85% of students are on nights, and the reason for that is that new hires are usually trained and um, oriented to the hospital in the day shift, so they do take the students at night. But you do learn a lot on nights. Um, you have a little bit heavier patient load, but it's not quite as busy. Um, we do ask our students to participate. We have a program that we've worked out with Kaplan and Lippincott um, so that you're constantly studying for your NCLEX exam while you're here at school. So each pediatric rotation, med surge rotation, you will have test questions that you'll be doing. And then when you're in integration where it's one-on-one, -on -one, with an RN, you'll do some practice NCLEX, NCLEX um, tests. The program is $350 per year, but it includes all of the testing as well as a live um, review course. And the reason we've done it this way is because many of you are gonna go on to advanced practice immediately when you finish with us, and we want to make sure you're prepared to take the NCLEX, and we have a 96% first time test taker um, on our NCLEX, so we're very proud of that. Um, this information that I'm gonna give you now is all gonna be on the um, accepted applicant page, so you don't need to write this down, it's all there for you. Um, but we are having orientation starting Wednesday, May 29th. This year we will be getting out on December 13th and re uh, returning January 6th. A um, couple of things, and this is all on the accepted applicant page. We um, require that you buy two uniforms. Some, some students buy three. Depends how often you like to wash. Um, and you, you usually do have to wash your uniform after one day's use. Um, there's gonna be a couple of different options for getting a stethoscope and tuning forks and things like that. Everything is listed on the website. Um, I'm asking that you read The Spirit Catches You and You Fall Down. I don't, has anybody read it here? Ooh, some people have, okay. So this is a great book about cultural um, competency and we're gonna be discussing that um, in the summer. Uh, we also ask that you read the first three chapters in the medication handbook so that you come prepared um, in the summer. And then there's 
some other minor things that you have to take care of. Everybody needs to have a background check, um, CPR, and I would encourage you to get a two-year CPR certification. And then there's the health services type requirements that you need to do, and all of this is listed. And everybody needs to have a PPD, which um, you're going to get one when you come as well, but you, it's... For healthcare providers, we do two PPDs. So it's one before you arrive, and then we also do one. We do have a uniform policy. As you can see, the students wearing our uniform, it's blue, all blue, or all white, or any combination of the blue and white. The uniforms need to be bought by, at, from our bookstore, and I think you were given something in your folders about the uniforms. You're going to have an opportunity this afternoon to try on some shirts and, and pants if you want um, so that you can get the correct size. Just keep in mind, put the shirt on over your current shirt so that you, you, you need to be able to move patients, okay? It's not a fashion statement. Um, you have to be able to move your legs. And, um, we also require you to have all white shoes and uh, with a non-conductive sole. We don't want anybody getting shocked when we're shocking patients. Okay. We do have a pretty strict absentee policy, um, and it's only in the clinical area. We do not require classroom attendance, although it's highly recommended. Some professors do have daily um, quizzes, and so if you're not there, that might affect your grade. Um, but as far as clinical, we feel very strongly about the, the amount of hours that we give you. Um, so we do require notes when you're ill, and we do deduct points when you're, when you're out. Um, it usually doesn't affect your grade if it's a, a documented illness. Okay. Um, we do have very strong standards here. All of you were number one, two, three, four, five in your previous classes. And so since there will be 180 of you, you won't all be number one, two, three, four, or five. Um, but we, we do require that we have a cumulative grade point average of a 3.0. Um, and we don't really curve. And um, so we take our academics very seriously. Um, but all the students make it through, so we don't have a high attrition rate. Um, we do use several hospitals in the area, um, obviously Columbia Milstein, Cornell, Allen Pavilion, Choney is the children's hospital here. We do use Montefiore in the Bronx, Mount Sinai, the Psych Institute, and we also send some students to NIAC. Um, but we do provide the transportation for that. So all of the um, clinical sites can be gotten by mass transit. You do not need a car here. Probably don't want a car here. So a couple things I just wanted to mention that a lot of our students love to do. Um, there, Cosmo is the Columbia Student Medical Outreach Program. This is... Um, a primary care health system that uh, was started by some medical students in 2004 and has spread. We have lots of nursing students there, lots of, lots of nurse practitioner students there, public health. Um, some of our students work as interpreters there, but it's a student-run clinic with faculty from the School of Nursing and from the School of Medicine um, overseeing what's going on in the um, in the cl clinic, and the stu it's only open on Thursday evenings and Saturday mornings. So um, some students only get in once. Um, some students can get in there a couple of times. And then the other um, um, global initiative that we have going on right now is we do send some students to the Dominican Republic during the integration, which is that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and they work um, in the clinic down in Dominican Republic. And we hope to extend, ex, you know, expand many of our programs. Um, once you're finished with me, um, you'll go on to your um, advanced specialty studies. 
um, and you're going to hear from the faculty in a few minutes. But most of those programs um, have diagnosis and management with a clinical associated and a seminar um, as you move forward through your specialty studies. As I said, after your first year, you'll sit for the NCLEX exam, which you will need to um, successfully pass to move on into the uh, master's portion. So i like to talk a little bit um, about the two PhD, the PhD program and the DNP program, but I want to um, entertain any questions. <laughs> 